At the heart of the Christian faith is our belief that Jesus is divine, that God is equally Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. So how do we know that Jesus is God? Well, John's Gospel is a great place for us to look if we want to see that truth. Now, John was very well placed to explore this idea. He was one of the 12 disciples and a part of Jesus' inner circle with Peter and James. In fact, he refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved, so he must have been really close close to Jesus and known him really well. So when this best friend of Jesus comes to write his gospel, he makes the purpose really clear in John 20 verse 31. These things are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. He wants to prove that Jesus is God. And he does that by organizing his gospel around two sets of seven, the seven I am sayings and the seven signs. So for John, it's what Jesus says and does that proves him to be God in human form. So let's check this out, firstly by thinking about the seven I am sayings of Jesus. Seven times in John's Gospel, Jesus describes himself in a way that begins with the phrase, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the true vine. Now these are beautiful statements, but why do they indicate that Jesus is telling us that he is God? Well, let's go back to Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. God is commissioning Moses and telling him to go to the Pharaoh and command him to set God's people free. And Moses is understandably nervous about this and asks a pretty reasonable question in verse 13. Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God replies in verse 14, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent you. I am is the self-definition of God and it becomes a title for him. So when Jesus very deliberately made these seven statements about himself, all of which began with the phrase I am, the people understood that Jesus was essentially making himself equal with God. As we know, many people saw him for who he was and became his disciples. But many people took him to be a blasphemer and the religious leaders of his day hated him for it and wanted him killed. But for John, the claim that Jesus was God was at the very heart of his purpose for the gospel. But not only did John use the seven I am sayings for that, he also used seven signs or miracles from Jesus' ministry to prove the point as well. Things that only God would be able to do. And each of these signs shows a different aspect of Jesus' divine nature. In John 2, Jesus turns water into wine showing his power over the processes of nature. In John 4, Jesus heals the son of a nobleman, showing his power over physical space, because he didn't even need to be present with the boy to heal him. In John 5, Jesus heals a man who had been lame for 38 years, showing that Jesus has power over time itself, because he can restore all that had been previously lost. In John 6, Jesus feeds the 5,000, showing that he has the power to meet all our needs in the most miraculous of ways. In John 6, Jesus walks on water, showing that he has complete power over nature. In John 9, Jesus heals a man born blind, showing that he has power over sickness. In John 11, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, showing that he has power over even death itself. For John, these sayings and signs are proof of the divine nature of Jesus Christ. And that's why he starts off his gospel with perhaps the most incredible statement about Jesus in the whole of the Bible. John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Isn't that just so incredible? God came to us in human form and made his dwelling with us. And the implications of that for us is wonderful because now God is not a doctrine or an idea to be believed, but a relationship to be enjoyed. Because Jesus is God in human form, we can't talk about God in the abstract anymore. He has become one with us. He knows your fears and anxieties. He knows when you hurt. He knows when you rejoice. He knows everything about you and can identify with you in all things. Sometimes when we talk about God, we look upwards, we point to the sky. But God's not in the sky. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that is the amazing truth 
that John wants us to celebrate through his gospel. If we want to make sense of our lives, make sense of our hopes and joys, make sense of our disappointments and sufferings, we need to go back 2,000 years to that stable in Bethlehem where the Word became a human being and dwelt among us and realize afresh that through his Holy Spirit, he dwells with us still. And if we build a relationship with Jesus, our lives will be transformed. None of that would be possible if Jesus was just a good man. None of that would be possible if Jesus was just a prophet. No, Jesus is divine. Jesus is God. And that is the greatest truth that any of us will need to hear.